Hi and welcome to my channel. In this video I'll show you how to replace the front and rear brake pads and the brake fluid on a Gen 4 Toyota RAV4. This is a 2017 model. This is the front jack point right behind the cover. Uh, you want to start with the front uh, and, and this is where you put the jack stand on. Uh, it's, it's clearly marked. Uh, and for the rear, use a piece of wood so you don't damage the suspension parts. Uh, but this is on the left side of the car, left rear. That's where you can lift it from. Uh, you don't need to raise the entire car. You can do this one wheel at a time. But if you're replacing all, all four, um, uh, the pads on all four wheels, then it's best that you raise the entire car, and especially if you're flushing the brake fluid, it makes it a lot faster. You need a 20, 21 millimeter socket for the lug nuts, and uh, if you don't have an impact, impact gun, then you want to remove the lug nuts first while the car is on the ground. Uh, so these bolts are, uh, are screwed onto the caliper guide pins uh, you remove them with a 14 millimeter socket in the rear in the front you'll need a 17 millimeter wrench too uh, so first you remove the bolts and at that point you can remove the the caliper and hang it using some implement i got those hangers from amazon cheap but uh, don't just um, don't just put it on the rotor. Um, uh, so these pads are pretty worn out. Um, uh, the replacements are uh, from uh, the replacements are from a Toyota dealership for fifty-two dollars the rear and uh, seventy-two for the front. It comes with that grease that you apply to the touch points and that sensor in the middle. Uh, did not come with the pads so you want to make sure you you compare look at the old pads where the sensor is exactly installed and then you just pull it out and and mount it on the new pads uh, so it's important as you see uh, it goes in the bottom on both pads and uh, and the triangular part is uh, facing outwards, uh, so that's very important. And, and and as you as you put the pads in, just carefully, you, you need to put it kind of sideways to get it in, and then you press it in. So, um, but um, once you replace it, and so the other side is exactly the same. Um, but then uh, you want to hold on the boot. There is a rubber boot that the pin goes into. And so hold the rubber boot. I mean, you can, you can remove the rubber boot too. You would, you would have to just put it back in. But um, uh, make sure you clean the pins real good and then grease them with some synthetic caliper pin grease. You can get that from any auto parts store. Uh, the bottom pin has a little rubber washer or something. The top one doesn't. After you clean it and apply the synthetic grease, uh, you want to make sure that it's inserted all the way into the rubber boot. Otherwise, dust and debris from the road may get in. And then, and also, also if you don't do this regularly, every year, minimally every two years, if you don't grease these pins, then at least with these Toyotas, in my experience, they could get a stuck in there. And then it would be very hard to remove these. Uh, so apply a generous amount and then uh, uh, lubricate the inside well. Just push it in and out a few times and then press it all the way in. And uh, then it should go inside the rubber boots. So the rear pads are about $52, the front $72 from Toyota. If you uh, uh, 
uh, that's for the set. Uh, so four pets in the rear, four pets in the front. So a total of uh, what 130 bucks or so. If you cannot find them, uh, let me know in the comments, <clears throat> and I can tell you where I got mine from. But make sure I'm not showing all the cleaning that I do, but uh, make sure you use a generous amount of brake parts cleaner. Uh, on the apply on the rotors on the everywhere all the touch points clean real good and then you will have to press the piston back in because the new pads are obviously thicker and so I'm using this uh, Uh, this tool here from um, Home Depot you can find this um, at Home Depot for probably seven dollars or so but uh, you can also buy uh, there's a specialty tool you know called piston press or something like that you can get that also from other parts stores but um, uh, after you've mounted the caliper torque the the and the balls um, 20 foot pounds for the rear and uh, 25 for the front so this is the front caliper and you'll need a wrench a 17 millimeter wrench to hold that one nut and then uh, remove the bolt once again the bolts are going inside the caliper pins the back of the caliper pins so the nut is really the caliper pin and once you do that then you can remove the caliper if it doesn't come out use a long screwdriver and kind of negotiate its way out and then um, hang the caliper to the side Uh, don't do as I'm doing. I'm just putting it on top of the rotor. Uh, as you saw, I hang the the ones in the rear. But if you do that, be very careful so that you. I'm I'm removing the sensor here, the brake um, sensors wear sensor, and um, and with these uh, little brackets, uh, if you remove them, uh, the the brake pads do come with new ones if you do remove the old ones just before you remove them either take pictures or watch this video a couple of times make sure that you're mounting them correctly that's very very important And as you can see, as I mentioned before, the, the triangular part of the sensors go on the outside. And with the front brakes, they go on the top.
if the pin doesn't come out easily you may have to like i said before it just depends on um, how frequently it's greased this one was a little harder you may have to uh, use a flat headed screwdriver and if it doesn't come out you may have to hammer it and if it doesn't come out you'll have to use pliers and if it still doesn't come out then you're in trouble <laughs> but that's why it's important that you grease the pens regularly so now on to uh, bleeding the fluid this bottle is uh, part of the kit you see the box there uh, from harbor freight you can get it from amazon too for probably 30 bucks comes with two bottles and a clear hose uh, I'm using this one it's sort of an auto refill kit it comes with different adapters that fit the mouths of different uh, uh, fluid reservoirs uh, but you don't have to worry about making sure that the tank has uh, fluid in it it just keeps it full and then you can use the other bottle to collect the fluid from um, each of the uh, calipers and you need uh, either you can do a gravity uh, uh, flush or, or you can use another person as I'm doing here and pay attention right now uh, to the sequence press release, release. press Release. Release. Press. Press. Board. Release. Release. Press. Press. Board. Release. Release. So as to the sequence of uh, bleeding, you want to start with the rear passenger wheel. Uh, um, because it's uh, it's the farthest away from the master cylinder and then uh, driver rear Press. after that and third the uh, passenger front Release. and then driver front uh, and uh, and so uh, I use the full liter of brake fluid here, dot uh, three brake fluid, and uh, and then uh, that's pretty much it. So I uh, really hope that you find this video of use, and if you have any questions or comments, uh, uh, don't hesitate to ask or, or um, give me feedback, and I will um, talk to you soon. Bye bye.